My fashion watch criticisms are well documented here on YouTube. I've more than vented my frustrations about some of the terrible quality watches that are being rammed down our throats. I think a lot of fashion watch brands absolutely deserve their condemnation. However, I thought today we'd drop the negativity and take a different approach to the subject. Because if we're honest, there are several things that these startup brands are doing that are giving them a leg up on the traditional heritage watch brands, especially when it comes to finding or attracting new customers. I think the likes of Seiko, Casio, Orient and so on need to take these approaches on board if they really want to capture that next generation of watch buyers. Because right now, these fashion brands are eating the lunch, even with rubbish products a lot of the time. These heritage brands have the products and the infrastructure but are choking due to complacency. And I've identified three main components of this. Marketing, web design and the products themselves. Let's begin with marketing because this is an area that these fashion brands definitely excel in. In fact, I'd say some of them are marketers first and watch retailers second. A quick look at the followership of their social media accounts is evidence enough. So what are they doing that these traditional brands aren't? Firstly, they're getting their watches into the hands of social media personalities. I'd be willing to bet that you first heard of the likes of Daniel Wellington, Movement, Vincero through someone online. Whether it be your favorite YouTuber, podcaster, celebrity, or someone else. This is what's known as influencer marketing. A Little bit of a cringy term, but that's what it's called. And there are a couple of approaches that these sorts of brands seem to take. A lot of the time, especially when it comes to smaller content creators, these brands can essentially get free advertising. They just ship the creator a watch that costs the brand virtually nothing to make and will usually get a video featuring their watch in return. Because that creator is overwhelmed by the possibility of getting a free product, which they might not get many of, oh, this is delicious. they often give the watch a ringing endorsement by default without even thinking about it, without even knowing anything about watches. This isn't always the case to be clear, but from my experience, it usually is. And for each of these videos published, this can result in hundreds, if not thousands of people watching someone endorse their brand on social media for virtually no cost to the brand. When it comes to bigger, more influential figures, these brands aren't afraid to sponsor some of their posts quite regularly, to repeatedly expose their target audience to their brand and establish an association to success and successful people. Unfortunately, heritage brands aren't really doing this whatsoever outside of major celebrity endorsements, that is. While I'm bombarded with watch review requests from a variety of fashion startup brands, the likes of Seiko, Tissot, Orient, they're nowhere to be seen. They only seem to focus on the likes of sports stars and Hollywood celebrities, which sounds good on paper because obviously they're so famous, but I think it comes with some downsides. The main one being that I just don't think the average person finds these people relatable whatsoever. Fashion brands have realized that you can make a more impactful connection to success by getting in with these social media personalities, especially the large ones, because their viewers, they all know they're successful. However, they've still got more of a personal connection compared to the run of the mill celebrities. Most of the time, the audience can relate to the creator in some capacity. It's probably the reason they've subscribed, giving their recommendations more weight and trust. This is especially true when you've got a creator who's been on the platform for many years, with their subscribership like following their journey along almost. You just don't get that same sort of personal connection with someone like a music star. Not to mention advertising through those people is probably cheaper than uh, paying a Hollywood celebrity to endorse your product. When it comes to social media, currently these older brands are relying on individuals to go out, buy one of their watches and then enjoy it so much that they feel the need to create promotional content in their own time for absolutely nothing in return. Unless you're a really niche channel, a wristwatch channel like mine, let's say, where you can benefit from something like affiliate income, there's really uh, no motivation to do that. I guess maybe they're trying to rely on the old uh, let the product speak for itself motto. But from my experience, that, that just doesn't compete in the new digital world, especially when your products don't even look nice online. And that takes me to the next point. A common trait of successful fashion watch brands is outstanding product photography. A quick skim through their websites and socials reveals an array of beautiful looking images that make their products look phenomenal, to the extent where they often look better online than they actually do in person. 
These are high resolution images that are edited to perfection and clearly showcase what the product looks like. If you're looking to quickly grab an image of one of these watches online, there are plenty to choose from. Unfortunately, the inverse to all of those is the case with most of these heritage brands. Outside of the occasional flagship watch release, there is almost no effort put into most of their product images. If I'm after a stock image of a Casio or Seiko for a random video thumbnail, let's say, I'll struggle to find a simple square on image of the watch. You literally cannot find a full frontal image of loads of their watches. How crazy is that? In addition to this, a lot of the time, the few photos that do exist are often terrible quality and not even representative of the real life product. There are so many images where the white balance is completely off meaning the colors are inaccurate. For example, silver starting to look yellow or green and watch dials that aren't even close to their real life color. This is outright misleading for customers. And it's very frustrating when you receive one of these watches and it's not what you were expecting. I think it's also lazy on the part of these big companies who could easily afford to splash out for really good product photos for all of their watches. Yet instead, they choose not to. Aside from that, one of the reasons that these brands are able to appeal to the masses is that they manage to build a sense of community through their marketing messages. It's tricky to pin down how exactly they do this, but I've noticed a couple of things. Firstly, their marketing images actually feature people wearing the watches and doing stuff in the watches. Admittedly, they're consistently featuring those who you'd consider conventionally attractive, but most of them aren't what you'd call celebrities. They also use a lot of user-generated photos that have been taken by their followers. These images show you how you could look in their watches. A quick look at Seiko's Instagram reveals the opposite. The only person really wearing their watches in this is world-famous tennis star Novak Djokovic. On their website, it's a similar story, just more celebrities. In fact, they still have outdated advertising for last year's Baselworld on their front page. Who's in charge of this? When you include other factors like the lavish launch events with their exclusive parties and celebrity crowd, it feels like they're sending a clear message. We don't want average people to buy our watches. I get that they're trying to um, associate themselves with success and that, but I think they're doing it in the wrong way and they're actually uh, creating the opposite message. I think it's one of the reasons that so many non-watch people that I speak to consistently think that brands like Seiko are out of their price range. They've never even looked at them or considered them in the first place. They've got this impression that Seiko isn't meant for them and that it, it must be too expensive so they haven't even bothered to check them out. Despite the fact that we know Seiko do some of the best low cost watches out there. This is compounded by the fact that many of these heritage brands completely forego advertising most of their existing models, only seeming to market their newest or most expensive pieces. The opposite is the case with these fashion brands. Everything they do shouts, join us and become a part of our community. Regardless of who you are, these watches are gonna make you better. That, that's the messages that they're sending. They're gonna help you climb mountains, go base jumping, or excel in your area of expertise. They also continually advertise a variety of their existing watches at a range of price points to appeal to as many people as possible. I've also seen them utilizing that us versus them mentality marketing encouraging people to join them in their cause, almost going against these traditional watch brands and mainstream society in general, which is weird, but it seems to work. Something that these newer fashion brands definitely do better is websites. Lots of these fashion watch brands have gorgeous, functional websites that really help them to generate more interest and sales. Not only are they attractive to look at, but they're easy to navigate and you can find the watch that you want really quickly and easily. The opposite can be said when it comes to most heritage brands. A lot of their websites are dated and cluttered. They're often a nightmare to navigate and don't work well on mobile, which can make it virtually impossible to find the watch that you want. Then if you do finally find the watch that you're after, you can't even buy it on their website. Luckily, brands like Timex uh, have gotten much better at this sort of thing recently, but we'll talk about that later. With these startup brands, not only can you find that watch really quickly, but you can buy it quickly and you'll normally get really fast delivery so that the, the watch is with you before you can even change your mind. This also means that they're able to adjust prices on the fly if they need to and do different types of sales easily. Most traditional watch brands don't sell directly to the consumer at all, meaning margins are gonna be affected by physical retail stores and different watch dealers. It's just less clean and simple than buying directly with the brand or manufacturer. 
Customers often find themselves dawdling and surfing between a variety of different websites to try and find the best price. Basically, I think it reduces the chances of an impulse purchase. Another area that fashion brands shine is customer service. Outside of the easy checkout and delivery process, they're also readily available to answer consumer questions through chat applications on their websites or through their social media channels, especially on Twitter. If you ask a question, they'll normally be back to you within, if it's not a couple of minutes, a couple of hours. Not six days or never, like with some other brands. They often have a very easy and consumer-friendly returns policy, which is useful when you've got rubbish products. Now, a lot of the time, I think because of the bigger infrastructure, a lot of the uh, heritage brands are able to make better watches for lower costs than fashion brands. However, one of the reasons that some of these fashion brands are taking off so quickly is that their designs just resonate more with younger people. Lots of these fashion companies are producing a wide array of designs that feature a variety of straps, colors, styles, and sizes, including many slim watches, which are particularly popular at the moment. For those wanting a watch as like a fashion accessory that really isn't gonna get in the way with their outfit. Just gonna sit there, look good. Personally, I don't think heritage brands are doing that well in this regard. Many of the big players have a plethora of samey looking designs that fail to capture the imagination of youngsters. Furthermore, these fashion brands identify their most popular and successful models and generally continue to make them available for years to come. Let's say you stumble on a video promoting a movement watch. Better than Walmart. I bet you that watch that's been involved with that paid promotion is still available to this day on their website. Unfortunately, especially when it comes to low cost pieces, many big brands just discontinue highly popular models out of the blue. I've noticed this on a few occasions recently and it's super frustrating. I made a video about uh, this Casio fashion watch. That video blew up, got over 100,000 views. The watch ended up selling out internationally on Amazon within a few hours. Then a couple of weeks later, people were having real trouble finding one of these online because Casio had randomly decided to discontinue it. So now that video I made, which was driving Casio sales, is being made completely irrelevant. Another one that springs to mind is the Seiko SNKL23. That watch got a ton of coverage online. Seiko was undoubtedly shifting a huge amount of them, then they discontinued it. Those articles and dozens of videos that were out there claiming that this was a fantastic buy were made completely obsolete. The same recently happened with the Seiko SKX to an extent. You may think that these brands could capitalize on this even more and sell even more watches by utilizing scarcity marketing tactics. However, they're even screwing this up. Many of these fashion brands are utilizing these limited edition scarcity strategies to sell more watches in a shorter space of time. Importantly, the potential customer is immediately made aware that these are in fact limited edition and soon will no longer be available, thus giving the potential customer the motivation to act now before it's too late. Frustratingly, with many heritage brands, these watches just seep away with a whimper and potential customers only have the rumor mill to go off. They almost never make official announcements about discontinuations, especially for lower end watches. And people are just left guessing, speculating, which is crazy. I will give some props to one brand that I think has adapted well in this regard, and that is Timex. Their recent Timex Q watches proved to be extremely popular and they are more frequently releasing these limited time models as a result. Unfortunately, this is an outlier and it isn't the overall trend with these traditional watch brands. In addition, I think another factor that contributes to these discontinuations is the sheer volume of models that are produced. Smaller fashion brands tend to focus on a relatively small number of pieces that they can effectively promote, each having their own unique look, name, and identity. Once you've viewed one of these watches, it will then stalk you around the internet. This is in the form of retargeting advertisements. This ensures that you see the watch repeatedly until you purchase. Many traditional brands seem to take the opposite approach. They pump out hundreds of different models, most of which have absolutely no marketing effort behind them whatsoever. Typically, it's left up to the dealers themselves to do the marketing for these pieces, which from my experience often just results in the most recent or the most expensive watches being the only ones advertised, with other standard models that could sell a lot just being left completely on the sidelines. And while I like having you know, plenty of options to choose from, sometimes it's just too much. 
And it's no surprise to me that so many great watches have flown under the radar, not sold very many because of the non-existent marketing and then being discontinued. So that's a couple of things that stand out to me. I'd love to hear your thoughts or maybe you think I missed something in the comment section below. A portion of this is going to be speculation and my opinion. If you found the video interesting, consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next one.